Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fallout 4. My name is Brian, your host and commentator, and here we are in Nuka World, or I'm sorry, Nuka Town, USA. We only have two quests left. A Moral Combat, Open Season. Look at that. And then this miscellaneous one, obviously, but I don't really count that as a quest because it's like a, you know, it's a... What are those called? Radiant quests. Just kind of padding, you know. Anyways, um, Amoral Combat. It actually took me a minute to trigger this quest in my practice playthrough. I don't know how I got it or where I got it in this one. I do remember getting it, though, and I was like, oh, wow, that triggered. Nice. Hadn't even triggered yet in my practice playthrough, but I got it in my practice playthrough by like walking up to this operator here. And she was like, yo, there's a new challenger in the whatever so you need to go talk to him now that seems to be the easiest way to trigger it initially other gang members will also inform you that there's a new challenger in there but for the meantime let's go ahead and I should have gone to the right not the left it's a much quicker route if you just go right but um what I'm gonna do this this quest is because it's kind of a radiant quest but not entirely um I am going to show you how to complete the first, I guess, challenger. The, the whole thing is, is there's six named challengers. But after those six, then uh, it just kind of becomes a generic enemy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off the six named challengers. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the first. I'm going to show you the full, you know, kind of run through of this quest with the first, um, I don't know, the first challenger. And then I'm going to jump cut and show off the other five. A few of the machines have been Anyways, we got to talk to Fritz here. I fixed them. I heard you were looking for me. You heard the alarm, right? That means someone's in the gauntlet. Looks like a real tough one, too. What happens next is up to you. You can take him on yourself in the arena, or I can make sure our little rat never gets out of the maze. <laughs> so you can either... um. You kind of either set them free, or you can fight them in the arena, or you can just... I think you just kill them, actually, in the arena. What happens if I choose to fight? All you need to do is gear up and head for the arena. Bring whatever <coughs> weapons and armor you want. Then we open up the door to the gauntlet and let in whatever dumbass scaver mark fell into the trap. After that, playtime. So what's the call, boss? You gonna give us a show or what? <laughs> Yeah, I will fight. Time to put on a show. Hell yeah! No better way to earn a raider's respect than I'm gonna fight all six of them. Crowd. Just head for the arena whenever you're ready, boss. All right. So once you talk to him, you have to do that every time too. You have to go and talk to him every fucking time. And he's like, I mean, he's not too far from the arena, I guess, but you know, it's still kind of an inconvenience. Wish you could just walk up to the arena. Or talk to someone in the arena rather than Fritch. But anyways, um, yeah, let's head back to the we'll head back to the arena. Once we complete this quest, I'm gonna show you how I re-triggered the quest so that way you can do all like six in a row relatively quickly. It probably will take about a half hour or so. Forty five maybe you know, forty five minutes maybe depending on how quick you are at killing them. <laughs> what level your I don't know actually not what level your speed is but I think all characters run the, the same speed in this game alright so all you do once you're in here is you go over here to the right and you enter your little combat whatever door Sabat is our first challenger. Like I said, there's six. We'll fight. Uh, we'll end up fighting um, a super mutant, a few other raiders. I don't know why it has to auto save right now. This is a really bad time for it to auto save. Like you know, auto save after the fight. Come on, game. What kind of shit is this? 
<sighs> that was trash. I don't know what that was all about. All right. Going to kill Mr. Invisible here. Raid him with all his goods. And then you just leave. Simple as that. Your door will open up. And then you just leave. Now, as far as re-triggering the quest goes, there's a route that I took. I found this route online through another YouTube video, which is very handy. Seemed to work for the most part. However, when the, the, uh, the quest gets triggered, it's not really consistent, I guess you could say. I don't know. It's not that consistent. I've seen more consistent quest triggers in my days. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of auto saves. This is why I'm not going to show all the bullshit in between when I'm triggering all the quests. But I will show you how to trigger the quest right now. And then you can kind of do it on your own. So what I do, for fuck's sake, oh my god, dude. This auto saving. I'm going to lose my mind. I don't know why it's auto saving so goddamn much. It doesn't even make sense. Okay, for fuck's sake. I bet some PC guys are like, who fucking consoles? Alright, let's go up here. Let me just kind of run back all the way over here. Shit's still auto saving. Let me just jump down here. I'm gonna run back all the way to the left. Just like in one long continuous autosave. I'll run past that wire there. Where that tree is. And then hop up here. Kind of run around up here a little bit. That's what I always do. This is like my ritual. Like run around up here. Just kind of jump around. Like woo. And then I go back. And most times. The quest would trigger right here. When I get to the wire. However, one time I did have it trigger while I was up here, like, jumping around. So it did trigger once while I was up there jumping around. And, uh, it also triggered when I was going back over these, like, ramparts or something. Whatever you want to call these, this upper section triggered, like, once or twice while I was up here, so... It's another point where it might trigger if it hasn't triggered yet over there. And I'm, I'm surprised it has not triggered yet again. If you took out the operators, I mean, I don't know. I'm over, boss. Making trouble? I know that one of the other members will still tell you, not, not just the operators. Like, that's not the only person that informs you of the quest. Oh my god. I don't know why it's not triggering. Let me try it again. This episode's already gonna be short. I'm just gonna jump cut to all the fights once this is done, so I guess I don't mind a little spending a little more time trying to figure this out. Come the fuck on. <sighs> there it is. Okay. Jeez. So yeah, just I guess just keep running back and forth. <laughs> Through that route that I showed you, maybe a certain amount of time also has to pass. Um, maybe you have to wait for this alarm to go off or something, the bright light to flash, in order to start the quest. But yeah, that's basically what I did for like six times. If it's not gonna work for you, I don't know. I'm sorry. That's literally that's all I did. That's the only way I know how to trigger it. Um, just look up 
online another way if it's not working for some reason. As you just saw, it took a minute for me, so give it a minute. Um, if you ask me, I won't be able to help you if you're like, I don't, I don't know, probably get a comment that's like, it's not working for me. And I'll be like, okay, I don't know what to tell you, man. I really don't know what to tell you. But uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump cut to the next, I guess, the next five fights and that'll, that'll be it. We'll end the episode after those five because after the first six, you just get generic enemies. So anyways... I'll see you at the fights. Okay, we're the jump cut part. So. Oh yeah, there's a big autosave right here. I forgot about that. Oh, I guess it wasn't that big. Anyways, um, yeah, this is the second challenger, Wretch. Who apparently just stands there for a hot minute. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show off the other five named combatants that you fight in a moral combat and I had some weird shit going on too when I was doing this quest kind of like right now how wretch is just chilling anyways while I'm fighting these guys or at least showing you the footage of me fighting these guys I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the how to trigger the quest a little bit <clears throat> so let me clear my throat as I get into the nitty-gritty here uh, I had, so not counting the one time where I had the first, you know, that first, like, I don't know where that, the, tr the, the trigger was originally for the quest. I don't know who gave, to, probably just some raider as I was walking around Nuka Town, USA. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But I, I don't remember where, when, and how I triggered the quest the first time. But, you know, I gave you an example of how to do it. And I did that four more times, so count on the time that I showed you, along with the four times that I did it afterwards to get all these named combatants. Um, out of those five times total, three times were triggered. The quest was triggered at the point that I showed off in the uh, in the video earlier, where it was like right like to the left of the entrance of Kolakar's Arena as I was coming down. Well, if you're if you're exiting Kolakar's Arena, like into Nuka US, yeah, Nuka Town, USA, it's to the left. Um, it triggered there three times for me, actually. And then one time it triggered by the tree with the wire. Here's the third named combatant, Rage. He's a super mutant. Very easy. I'm, like, sitting here shooting him, and then I'm like, wait, what the fuck am I doing? Just pull out my death claw gun. I'm like, he doesn't have power armor. I can stun this fool. And I did. Anyways, the uh, one of the other times it triggered by the tree with the wire, and then the other time it actually triggered up by where the, uh, the, the cappy... Or whatever, maybe it's a like a thing of Nira, you know, when you run past the tree and the wire, and then I said to like hop up onto that area. There's like a little statue of a Cappy or whatever, a Nuka Cola bottle, something like that. It actually triggered once up there for me as well. So it's kind of, it's kind of, I don't know, it's a little random, I guess you could say, but not quite. And if you're having a hard time, like it's not, it's not, it's just not triggering. Here's the fourth combatant. If you're having a hard time and it's just not triggering, I'm telling you, just keep on, just keep trucking through it, Commander Bear. See, this dude just stands here. These these last, uh, I think the last two just stand, or three, the last three just stand there. I was like, what? Look at this dude just standing here. <laughs> Told you I had some weird shit going on with this quest. Weird spots where the quest would trigger. Weird, I don't know, weird... AI, enemy, reactions, interactions, something like that. Anyways, that's Commander Bear, one of the gunners. So he's dead. And then here's the fifth. Well, I'm just going all the way to the door, I guess, on this one. Here's the fifth uh, combatant, Sabine. Now, I had a fucking hard time triggering this quest. This is what I'm talking about when I'm like, just keep, keep going back on through there, running that route I showed you, because Sabine took like... God, I went back and forth like five times before Sabine triggered. I was like, is this even going to work? I don't know. But eventually, uh, yeah, eventually she did, the quest did trigger and then I fought her. And then uh, the final one wasn't too bad. I think it triggered after like only one trip back and forth. So it's kind of, like I said, the timing's kind of random on all that. So anyways, now that we've taken care of the first five named combatants, five stim packs... Honor and a power fish. She didn't even use any of those. I guess she's supposed to during the fight, you know, to make it difficult. 
So here's what, uh, this is interesting. This is what happened when I walked in to go fight the final combatant. Or I guess when I was walking to, uh, Frisch here huh? to, well, you know to talk to know. him about it. I don't know, Porter was bugging out a little bit there. I'm just like, you're freaking me out, man. Time to put on a show. Hell yeah! But, uh, yeah, I actually do kind of show off a little bit of this for the final one. Since it's the final one and, uh, Gage was acting so weird there. And this episode's only like 20 minutes anyway, so figured I'd extend it a little bit and kind of go over, you know, the situation with how to trigger a moral combat. And there's, <laughs> yep, there we go, this is Gage. I was like, I think he did this the whole fucking time. I'm like, hands up there, whoa, where are you going? And he's like, hey, I didn't do anything, be cool. And I'm like, nah, man, you be cool, what the fuck are you doing, you know, sort of deal. Anyways, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to trot on over to the Cola Cars Arena. Where we will fight the Rogue Knight. And after you defeat after you defeat the Rogue Knight, you get yourself a little bit of a legendary weapon called the... I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Artern Arternius, Artanius, something like that. It's a laser minigun. Which, well, I'm sure you can you know, modify it so it's not a minigun. But we'll see what the boost does. I can't remember. I think it, you don't have to reload, if I remember correctly. That's what the, the boost is for that weapon. Or the, the perk. I don't know. I was calling it a boost. The buff. The perk. Whatever the hell you want to call it. But uh, yeah. After after the rogue knight has fallen. You've defeated all of the named combatants. And yep. <laughs> the porter's still being a weirdo. He's like. Hey. I'll go in there like this. It'll it'll freak him out. It'll throw him off. And I'm like. Hey. That's a good plan. He's like. I'll just slide in here like. Woo. Look at me. Or some. I think he actually gets locked behind, though. He doesn't actually enter the arena with me. He's like, oh, I'm locked in here. Plan didn't work, Porter. Anyways, here's the Rogue Knight. And um, I feel myself fighting her twice. I don't know if the Rogue Knight's always a female character. But uh, she was in my file, so. And I think she was in my practice file, so probably. Once you uh, blow the helmet off, but I got my, I was getting my ass handed to me here in this first fight. So I'm going to kind of show you how I failed the first time. Well, actually, I didn't fail. I kill her. But how I didn't do so, so well the first time. And then I'll show you how I completely just destroyed her and kicked her ass the second time. So it'll get lit up quite a bit. I didn't utilize the grenades like I should have. I had very powerful grenades that I was like, man, why am I not using them? And I kept... I kept using jet. I, thought, I did this like three times during this fight, I think. I kept using jet before I had to reload. Like here, I'm like, oh, I'll just use these healing items. I bet I use jet too while I'm reloading. Yup, there it is. So I gotta, and then it cancels my reload. So I have to reload while I'm using jet. I'm like, one, two, and then I'm like, oh, fuck. This fight just went horrible for me, but I did pull it off. By throwing grenades. I almost killing myself. Look at that. I gotta get better at throwing uh, at my timing of throwing grenades. I'll often throw a grenade after throwing another one, and then the first grenade will explode. And then <laughs> blow up the second grenade and hurt me really bad, both emotionally and physically. I'm like, why? And that was just a terrible grenade right there. Oh no, it wasn't. That one. Okay. I think I killed a raider or something. I don't know. I got some experience points there. Oh, maybe it was her. And then you get the Amoral Combat XP. But yeah, those Nuka Nukes. And plus, I used those on her, and I was like, man. Anyways, here's the second time. Much smoother, much cleaner attempt here. This is how you should handle the Rogue Knight if you're playing as my character, I guess. I think I used some plasma grenades, and I'm like, ah, this ain't doing shit. So then I swap them over for the... The Nuka Grenade. Man, I was getting lit up too. I almost died. Again. Finally get rid of that Where's Brew. I do kind of dick around. And then I'm like, you know what? Jet. I think I shoot her a few times and I'm like, there's got to be an easier way to do this. Oh, maybe not. Oh, no. Yeah, I guess I just... Yeah, see? <laughs> I, all I had to do that whole time was just properly use Jet when I didn't need to reload. Everything would have been smooth. But no, because I suck at this game. 
Anyways, yeah, there you go. That's the, uh, yeah. She also has a poisoner's whatever, right arm, something like that. There's the Eternus. Yeah. Eternus? 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 Unlimited ammo capacity. So energy weapons, which is what I use, so that's cool, even though I'm not going to use that gun. I'm just going to keep using the gun I have, and then, uh, yeah, I think that's that's it. We have about, okay, I guess I have like 30, 30 seconds left of footage. Next episode, we're going to do the open season quest, and then I kind of, oh yeah, and then Gage is still acting weird, so I kind of mess around with him for a little bit. So hey, next episode, we'll do the ball. open season quest, and I save that for Get after power there. play, because you know, you defeat one of the gang bosses in power play, so I'm like, go over there, and he's like, okay. <laughs> And uh, it makes it a little easier. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. My name is Brian, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.